All right. Clever Tom and the Leprechaun by Linda Shute. Oh, I like these illustrations of Tom. He's out in the, he's out in nature, skipping and frolicking, and he's got a shovel here. Oh, what are we gonna do with that shovel? Clever Tom and the Leprechaun. One fine day on Lady Day in the Harvest, Tom Fitzpatrick took a ramble down the lane. Click, clack, click, clack, he heard through the hedge. So Tom tiptoed closer to take a look. Looks like there's a pothead in the woods over there. The clacking sound stopped when Tom peeped through the bushes and in the shadow. What did he see? Why, a big gallon pitcher and a teeny tiny man with a brown leather apron and a three-cornered hat. That's peculiar. Up the small man climbed on his wee wooden stool and dipped his little piggin into the crock. Then he settled down with his full mug beside him to hammer on the heel of a fairy-sized shoe. Look at his shoes, Sam. He's got some fairy-sized shoes. By the powers, thought Tom. It's a leprechaun! If I catch him and scare him, he'll give me his gold. Since I'm a clever fellow, that should be simple. Before the sun sets, I'll have my fortune made. <gasps> He's gonna try to take the gold from the leprechaun. Tom started at the leprechaun. Tom stared at the leprechaun and tried not to blink. He knew that if he looked away, the old man would escape. Then he crept up quite near and tipped his hat politely saying, good day to your neighbor, blessings on your work. Thank you kindly, said the small one, but he never looked up. He just kept on tapping at the heel piece of the brogue. He's working on his shoe right there, and he's not looking at Tom. Tom moved his hand closer while he smiled very sweetly and said, Today's a holiday. You shouldn't have to work. The leprechaun frowned and answered Tom sharply. If I do, that's my business and none of your own. Instead of pestering me, young man, you ought to be watching your father's fields. Look there. The cows have broke into the oats. See? They're knocking the corn all about. Cows in the cornfield? Tom's head started turning. Oh, wait, he's not supposed to look away. But he wasn't fooled by the leprechaun's trick. Quickly, he grabbed the sly fellow and cried, Now you're my prisoner. Tell me where you're, where is your gold? The leprechaun wiggled and twisted and whined. I'm just a poor man. But Tom held him fast. You and I both know you're a lion, said Tom. And he made a fierce, frightening face. Finally, the leprechaun quit squirming and said, Tom Fitzpatrick, you're too clever for me. I see you're after my buried treasure. So... I'll have to show you where it is hid. I wonder if he's going to trick Tom again. With his eye on the bitty man locked in his fist, Tom followed where the leprechaun led him. He traipsed over a hill and under some hedges and through a ditch and across the peat bog. That's like a really swampy place where it's wet and muddy. At last, just when Tom feared he'd been hoodwinked, that means tricked, he found himself in a great field of weeds. Dig there, dig right there, said the leprechaun, pointing to a bush. Deep under that bullion is where I put my gold. Thunderation, said Tom. I need to fetch my spade. That's like a shovel. But when I return, I'll be lost. There are 40 acres of bullions here, and each plant looks just like the other. How will we ever find this spot again? Still watching that leprechaun, Tom figured out a plan. He tied his bright red garter on the bush. Swear, you old rascal, that you won't take this off while I run back to get my spade. Again, that's a shovel. That I will promise you, the little man said. 
Tom grinned, knowing leprechauns always kept their word. That means they can't tell a lie. Now, since I have, oh, now, since I have shown you where my treasure is, I don't suppose you'll need me anymore. No, said Tom. My fortune's made. You may go, and good luck with you. Then, uh, goodbye, Tom Fitzpatrick, said the leprechaun. May you do much good with what you find. Well, I guess he's going to keep the gold. Well, away Tom ran as fast as he could run, figuring how he'd spend his gold. Then back he came with his shovel in his hand, back to the field of bullions, and he's going to look for that red piece of cloth. Right? But when he got there, lo and behold, a garter just like his own was tied to each and every bush as far as he can see. Look, every single plant has the red thing tied on it. He'll never know which one it was. <gasps> Who in the world could have done that? Tom dug under the bullion where he thought he'd tied his garter, but nothing was buried under that bush. And so he dug under another. He dug to the east, and he dug to the west, and it became night, but still he found no treasure. The harvest moon rose as he dug to the north, and it set as he dug, dug southward. Look, there's the moon going down, the sun coming back up. Oh, it's day again. And when the sun came up, Tom saw he dug a hundred holes, and tired Tom Fitzpatrick knew he couldn't find that gold. So... He gave up and headed for home. I guess I would too, wouldn't you? From then on, Tom always carried his spade and he never stopped listening for a tapping in the field. Every chance he got, he'd tell how nearly he found that gold. And since I'm a clever fellow, Tom would end his tale, the next time I catch that leprechaun, I'll have my fortune made, find that gold. And there he is, an old man now, telling the story to these children and to us. The end. <laughs>